Hey there, I'm Alan Matthews from Classical Guitar Shed, and in this video we will be talking about the E major scale. This uses the very lowest note on the guitar, so it's a very common scale to see in guitar music. If you enjoy this, please do subscribe to this channel. Click the little bell for the notifications. Also, if you look down below, you'll find a link where you can get a free PDF download of many of the most common open position scales on the guitar. All right, let's do this. So you have three ways of looking at this on the screen here. We have tab notation and a grid. For the grid, you start with the lowest sounding note and then work up through the strings and you'll hear it as you, as you play it and then back down for descending. We also have tab down here with the fret numbers on the lines and then we have the musical notations and that's where I'll explain right now. If you see a number with a circle around it, that means string number. First string, sixth string, so the low sound, lowest note is the sixth string. And then the numbers beside the notes indicate finger numbers, not fret numbers. They happen to coincide with fret numbers for this example, but it doesn't always mean that. And then these brackets right here just means stay on that string for, for that many notes. And as you play the scale with the right hand, you can just play any finger that comes easy for you. Just your thumb, just a finger, it doesn't matter. When you're learning a new scale, just focus on the left hand, and then later you can add in good scale technique for the right hand. Right hand technique is beyond the scope of this video, but you can check below for a link that will take you to all sorts of right hand tutorials. So this scale, just gonna play through it here, we have on the lowest string, 024, fifth string, 024, so those strings are the same. So as you're learning this, I would just play just those. Back and forth, just to memorize that shape. 0, 2, 4, 0, 2, 4. The next one is 1, 2, 4. And then the third string, 1, 2. Second string, 0, 2, 4. Just like the sixth and fifth strings. And then the open E. And then we can come back down. So this is the scale. Now as you're playing this, a couple tips. One, keep your hand in a nice C shape. So we don't want to touch this part of the hand or this part of the hand to the back of the guitar or to the guitar at all. And so keep your thumb behind your fingers, nice C shape, space in the hand with your fingers nice and curved. We don't want to tilt too much because then the pinky is going to have a hard time getting over to these notes and it's going to make it strenuous. Instead, have some space. Rotate around, keep your, this part of your finger, this part of your hand really nice and parallel to the bottom of the neck. And that way, as you play it, notice how my pinky is nice and curved. My little finger is nice and curved and it's straight. And so my index finger is straighter than the little finger. And that's, when you're playing scales, that's a good way to do it. Your index finger is very strong at this kind of angle. Your, your little finger enjoys a little bit of curve to give it some strength. Now when, if your guitar is very low, you might be tempted to put your hand on the back of the guitar like this. I recommend against it. Um, get your neck up and it'll allow you just to use your hand better, use your body better, less wear and tear on your wrists and your fingers and your body in general. Taking a quick look at the music theory of the E major scale, this key has four sharps in it, F, C, G, and D. And that means that every time we encounter one of these on the musical staff, like this F or this G, that means that every time that the F, C, G, and D are written, they're always sharp. So they're always moved up a fret. So instead of G, it's G sharp. And so this makes it less common, less, uh, less popular with other instruments because four sharps is funny to read in, in music, it can, be, it can be difficult for other instruments that aren't as used to it. But guitar music, we use this key a lot because it coincides with the E chord, all the open strings, the full range of the instrument. And so it's very popular on the guitar, less so on the trumpet or other instruments like that. A couple of things to keep in mind as you are practicing scales, as soon as you can, get into a really steady rhythm. Ideally use a metronome always in your scale practice because one of the things that we're doing with the scales is training our ability to press a note 
and release a note at a specific point in time because this is what we need in our pieces of music. So that's one of the skills we're building through playing our scales. So keep it nice and steady. It can be slow, but just keep it really nice and steady. If you're going really slow with the metronome, it could be easier to have two clicks per note. So click, 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 click. Two notes per, per click or two clicks per note instead of just one makes it easier at slow tempos to stay right with the metronome. And if you don't know how to use a metronome, there's a full tutorial linked in the link below on the page that's linked below. So you can find that link and also get a download of this, this scale and many other scales as well. Another thing that you can listen for in your scale practice is the connection of one note to the next. So the way that each note connects to the next includes a gap. And so it could be a very small gap, it could be a very large gap. Quiet, that's the gap, gap. This means synchronizing the right hand, so you don't need to worry about that until you are putting some sort of right hand technique in with the scale. Great, so I hope you have enjoyed this exploration of the E major scale. It's a very common one, very popular one. It uses all six strings, and you will certainly encounter it in guitar music if you're playing written guitar music. So please subscribe to this channel if you would like to and if you would like more videos like this. And I look forward to seeing you in the near future. Bye-bye.